everybody, it's Chris with Willis Family Reptiles and uh, actually just came home from a high school reunion that me and my girl had tonight. Um, had a blast, excellent time, it was fantastic. So I come home, check on the baby snakes. They've shut out. So uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let y'all see some footage of the uh, babies, show them out there and uh, they got their fresh skin so to speak. And I'm going to go ahead and clean them up a little bit, sex them, and then I'm going to set them up in some new tub boxes, offering them the, the first meal and put them in the rack that they'll be uh, starting out in. Stay tuned. Before we get too much into that, I just wanted to show. Alright, so here's the boxes I'm going to be putting them in. Um, just paper towel, substrate, little water dish, and a hide for them. A little bowl with the slot cut out for them to go into. Um, these are just little six quart bins. So this is what they'll be going into starting out. Got six air holes, three in the front, three in the back. Um, the lids will be on, the lids aren't airtight or nothing like that. So they'll have ventilation, I'll be changing, checking it daily. And if at any point I feel like it's not enough, I'll put some more holes in it. But yeah, that's the simple setup I'm gonna be starting with. So now on to the snakes. All right, so we're gonna be starting out here with the pastel. The slightly less hissy of the two. Try not to get into the lighting too much. Very uh, clean patterning and colors. Ooh, a little runaway. So I'm gonna sex this one real quick. Uh, gonna probably have to do this out of frame for simplicity of getting it done. Looking like a female. I'm not seeing any actual hemipenes there. Um, I'm not the greatest at sexing. Um, I do know how to do it. I am very careful and gentle with the snakes. But that does appear to be a female, which is awesome. Let's try out, check out the pie bald next. This is the hissy one. I don't know if you can hear her or not, but that's all she's doing. Oh yeah, I'm sure y'all have to have heard that one. Alrighty, so she wants to keep her back to us, but that's okay for the moment. You can see her nice whites. The single saddle at the back there. Look at her head. Try and get her turned around here. Sorry, the shadow of my head keeps getting into the lighting. I'm trying not to do that. Interesting how right on the back here, the pigmentation of the yellow leaves, and it's almost like a silver color there. That's highly interesting. It's like a silverish, whitish, grayish color. It's kind of hard to describe. I don't know, maybe that's normal. See, over here you get something similar on the side. Focus camera, focus camera. That's kind of crazy. Before it turns white, you get that. Crazy. The single saddle over here is directly over the cloaca. No ringer, not connected underneath. Let me go ahead and sex this one, see what we got. Hey, little wiggly worm thing. This one's much harder to sex because she's wiggling like crazy. Did you just bite my shirt? I do believe you just bit my shirt. Alright, seriously. Hey, don't bite me. Okay, she got me. Just barely. Looks like two little tiny hemipenes there. It's kind of hard to tell for sure. But it looks like this one's going to be a male, possible female. Like I said, I'm still new to popping them. Um, it's a bit easier with the larger snakes. Like this one, it's easier to make them pop, but it's kind of harder to tell exactly, for me anyways. Um, but this one looks like a male to me from what I can see. 
and the other one looks like a female. So that's what I'm going to call it for the time being. And my god, look at the strangeness. I cannot be the only one seeing that. Just the loss of color right before it hits the whites. That is crazy. Try and get the other side. Come over here, get into focus. Look at that. That is just strange. That's really cool. That's awesome. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get them set up in their tubs, and then we are going to offer them their first feeding. This one ought to take. She's nippy. Done bit my shirt and my hand. Hissing like crazy. So we'll see. All right, hopefully the camera angle will be good there. Um, we're going to start with the, uh, the uh, pie ball, the pastel pie, the one that appears to be the male. I need your little fuzzies. What have you got in here for me? Oh, I want those little really bitty pink fuzzies. Yes, like that guy there. Yeah. Lo and behold, I got some nice little pinkies for him. These are African salt first pinkies, so let's see if I can get them to take straight from the tongs. Alright, so I'm not getting any response from him really right now. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pop that in there. Put the top back on for a moment. And let him see if he wants to go after it while I tend to the next snake. And I'll try the same thing. Offering on the tongs first. And if I get no response, then again I'll drop it in for a little while. It's in there alive. And I'm not leaving the room while I am doing this. Pastel. This one's a little more squeaky. That might be promising. I think it more spooked him, or her. Didn't really know what to do with it, so I got more spooked than anything. I promise I didn't conk that thing or nothing, I just grabbed it. I guess the way I grabbed it, it threw into some sort of little seizure fit. I want you actually on your feet, running. Okay, we'll bounce around like that for a second. We'll see if that intrigues the girl in there. So yeah. I'll get back to you all in just a few minutes. I'm going to keep an eye on these guys and see what happens. I think I might go ahead and take their water dishes out for the moment, too. Alright. So neither one of them ate tonight. I gave them about a half an hour. And then I went ahead and removed the pinkies. I'll try again later. Um, but for now, I gave them their water, their hide, and their tub and everything. And they're sitting in this little... What's well, normally my quarantine rack, but there's no cichlids in it right now. Just temporarily to uh, facilitate them until they get into the next size tote. Anyways, y'all have a good evening. What you doing over there, Lenny? Oh, just relaxing and watching TV. Did you have fun this weekend? Yeah. What did you do this weekend? Oh, that was today. What did you do yesterday? Yeah. Yep. Got to stay the night, huh? No, not forever. <laughs> Easy, you two. Have to correct them. The puppy's one still teething, and T-Bone gets all kinds of little marks on him. It might. Are you trying to give me a citrusy heart attack? That's how I'm a neighbor. 
That's the annoying, annoying orange gaming playing Hello Neighbor. Just did a partial water change on this guy. He's in there somewhere, probably freaked out from me doing a water change still. Hey, he's down here in the corner. What's up, dude? Squirtle Turtle, what you doing? Don't leave me alone. Oh, yeah. That's yep. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. Anyways, let me uh get back to the snakes. Hey everyone. So okay. Um, it's the next day now. Um, I think when I recorded the video last night, I had said that it was Friday night. It was Saturday night. Um, I've been drinking. Uh, anyway, so yeah, today is Sunday. Uh, we did the second half of the reunion today, which was the family day. We had the first night was the adult night, bar hop and whatnot. Second night, we got the families together. Um, did a picnic thing at the park with the playground for the kids and everything. After a few hours of doing that, we weren't ready to quit, so we took the kids out to uh, CC's Pizza. So yeah, had a lot of fun. It was great. Um, anyway, so yeah, like I showed in the video last night, the um, snakes did shed uh the hatchlings did they had their i gave them their i offered them their first food the first feeding i offered them their first feeding but uh yeah neither one of them took uh i'm gonna go ahead and check on them right now just to see how they're doing and their new individual um setups and i'm gonna catch that on video so yeah let's get to it Alrighty, everybody I haven't decided on names for these two yet, because uh, as y'all know, I like to name all my breeders after Norse gods. Um, what I was actually thinking about for these two, I haven't been able to find out if there's any sex officially linked to the two names, the two wolves, Skull and Haiti, which were the um, offspring of Fenrir, but I think they're supposed to be both males, and I got one male, one female, so far as I can tell, so uh, I don't know if I'm going to go with that name scheme or not. Um, and then again, I don't necessarily have to keep a male name to a male snake if I didn't want to. Anyways, here goes this little guy. He's in here just chilling out. He was quite comfortable with his hide. He seems to be doing okay. Just tucked back in the corner, doing his own little thing, chilling out. So yeah, not doing anything special. He's still got water. I might come and drill these out a little bit more a little bit later. I don't know yet. Um... But in the meantime, this is what they have. Uh, but yeah, he seems to be doing pretty good. Let's check on the other one. He's actually moved his hide so that he could sit where the hide was, just not directly under it. Huh. I still love that marking behind the neck. Wow. That is like crazy awesome. Like the color just goes away. It's fucking amazing. I'm sorry, that's amazing. <laughs> it's so crazy. I've never actually had a snake that did that. I don't know if that's part of the piebald gene or if that's a paradox thing or what. If y'all know, let me let me know. Say something to me, because I have never seen that before in a snake in person. I thought about maybe it's a paradox. Um, I've seen where the paradox kind of does something like that, but not exactly that. Um, so that's what's kind of crazy to me. I've seen paradox where it's like you have the spider morph and then you just have like a section where it's like the normal morph and then it goes back or whatever, you know, or it crosses over and changes. I've never seen it in a piebald where it just like loses the coloration like that. Um, I don't know what could have caused it. It's like, you know... It's a gray color. It's like a grayish whitish color. That coloration's not in the normal. Um, and it's not white like the piebald portion of white exactly. So I don't know what's causing it. Um, yeah, if y'all know if that's something normal with piebalds, please let me know. If it's not, if you have any idea what it is, let me know because I think it's fascinating. I've never seen that before. It's really like just brought all my attention onto this snake because of that. 
Um, I haven't actually, because of the reunion and everything I've been doing the last couple days, I haven't actually had the opportunity to research it yet to see what it might be. But I think that that's just so cool. Okay, everyone. So I'm actually in the process of editing the video. And I wanted to take a quick clip real quick to throw in with it. Um, I did some research on that strange coloration on the piebald's neck. And I only found one... Okay, so basically what I found was that there's a condition, a strange thing going on where they can lose the coloration in the shed, and in later sheds sometimes it comes back, sometimes it doesn't, but that generally happens during a shed. Um, this snake had that coloration um, prior to shedding, so I don't necessarily think that that's it. Um, other than that, I only saw two pictures um, online of a piebald that had that. I was thinking maybe it was something where piebalds, that's a common thing that the pigment starts to change before it hits, it changes abruptly to white. But the only two images that I could find where that was the case, um, both of them seemed like the head looked almost like that of a normal, but the coloration of the patterning beyond that was uh, not normal. Um, and in those uh, it didn't specify anything about whether or not it was a paradox, and I'm wondering if that might be the case. Um, just because this one's head doesn't necessarily look normal, though. Um, it looks like it matches up with the rest of the snake, or the only other saddle. Um, both the pictures I saw, they were not as extreme white as this one is. They are the ones that had multiple saddles, or the entire top was, you know, for the most part, had its patterning, and the whites were just really high, but not like cut off at the neck completely white except for a saddle or two I didn't see any pictures like that um, where they had the strange coloration or lack of pigment right under the neck um, the two snakes that I bred came from completely different breeders and to my knowledge neither one of them was supposed to have any kind of exanthic in them or anything like that which I'm not necessarily saying that's what I think this is um, the only reason I mentioned that, like I said, the one thing that I did find about the coloration, the pigment leaving in a thick shed, usually the color would return, but it would resemble that something kind of like of an exanthic, which this does. Like, you lose the coloration except for pretty much the black and white. Um, so, it's very interesting to me. Um, the research that I've done didn't really confirm much other than the fact that as far as I can tell, it's some kind of a paradox. Mm -hmm.